Now, I'd like to talk about the current status and position of the Asian capture fishery in the world fisheries. You'll find Asia is the main field of small-scale fisheries globally. This figure shows the world fisheries and aquaculture production. As you know, the capture fishery production began plateau from 1990s and the aquaculture production is increasing rapidly. However, the capture fisheries production still occupies more than half of the world production. This figure shows the world fish consumption. It increased very rapidly, very rapidly, because both the population and per capita consumption increase. Where people eat more fish than ever. I said that the capture fishery production has not been increased so much from 1990, but it it depends on the area. You can see that the production is decreasing in temperate area and upwelling area. However, in the tropical area it is increasing continuously. Especially Southeast Asia is a special area. This graph shows the catch trend by area. Some of them are fluctuating or decreasing, but the catch is continuously increasing only in three areas there, Indian Ocean and Pacific West Central. Thus, the development of the capture fisheries in this area is the key to future global capture fishery development. This graph shows the number of fishers in the world by area. 84% of the world fishers are Asian. It's a very big portion. This graph shows the efficiency or the productivity of the fishers by area. It means the production per fisher per year. The Asian fisher uh, catches around 2 gross ton per year, but European produce 10 times larger. The efficiency of Asian fisher is very small. That's because the majority of the Asian fishery is small scale. This figure shows small boats in Thailand. I visited Pamekasan, Madura Island, Indonesia. I met him. He caught small shrimp by this hand push net. I made a small interview with him, with a local officer. He worked very hard for hours and caught only a few kilograms of small shrimp. He bring the shrimp to a local market. He said he got sufficient money for his life because the price was high. I guess his income is much smaller than an office worker in Jakarta, but sufficient for his life in this area. And he is happy. In Japan, we also have artisanal small-scale fisheries. This photo is a kombu fishery, the giant kelp. Kombu is very important seafood in Japan because it's essential for the basic soup stock of Japanese cuisine. This is also a very special Japanese artisanal fishery, the spear fishery of hen clam. Hen clam is delicious for sashimi. The fisher catches the clam by this gear uh, with spears. They can collect best size clams and small clams can escape from the gear. The fishing season and the fishing hour are strictly limited. If a fisher would use dredge or similar efficient gear, he could catch more clams easily. However, it would lead to overfishing and the number of fishers in this village would be reduced. The low efficiency fishery protects 
from overfishing and provides employment for the fishing village. Low efficiency fishery has advantages. So from the uh, small scale artisanal fisheries example in Asia, we can find that uh, uh, they are low efficiency and the number of fishers is very large. And it is essential for local food supply and employment. And because of the low efficiency, it uh, provides a sustainable use of the stock. However, the, it is difficult for monitoring, surveillance, or control because the number of fisheries is very large or difficult to access. And in this case, the, it's very difficult to collect the information, especially the catch information or the fishing effort information or the biological information.